Welcome back to 8 Metal Strings. Today I'm coming at you with a riff breakdown again, this time of the selective picking part from the Animals as Leader song, Monomyth. This riff can be broken down into four primary sections. The first is a group of nine notes, which we could subdivide into three groups of three if we wanted, and it looks like this. The second group is very similar to the first group. Again, it's nine notes grouped into three groups of three, and there's only one note difference. So it's essentially the same, but it's enough of a change to call it a second section. The third section is yet again, another group of nine notes broken down into three groups of three. This section moves up in position doesn't require as much stretching, and in my opinion, it's just a little bit easier than the first two. The fourth and final section of this riff is kind of the release to all this tight and intricate selective picking. But simultaneously, it's also a bit of a buildup into either the riff repeating again, or the next section of the song. This part moves down to the fifth position, uses mostly the pick, and no longer groups notes into groups of three. However, it still follows that triplet feel that was established during the earlier sections. All right, so let's go into a bit of a deeper breakdown into each of these sections and figure out what's going on in them. I wanna point out just a few tips that I found along the way, as well as kind of the main things that we're gonna to have to watch out for if you wanna play this riff cleanly. So before we even get into the notes of this riff, we have to talk about the right hand muting. So we're gonna to wanna to lay our uh, pinky side of our hand along the strings here, and you're gonna to try to cover every string that you can. You might even wanna try resting your pinky on string one to avoid that string from ringing, um, as it kind of escapes my finger as it kind of like lifts up at the bottom here. So we need that muting in order to get the tone of all these notes. Another thing to mention about tone is we wanna be on the split pickup or the second position of a five-way toggle if you have that option. And that will just get a nice clear tone, removing a lot of those bass frequencies that muddy up these kind of uh, riffs. So the first section starts with a power chord that is arpeggiated from the root up to the octave down to the fifth on the seventh fret starting on string seven. Now we're gonna use finger one, three, and two on this, so it's a bit of a stretch, and you're gonna to need to really pull that wrist up in order to achieve that stretch. Make sure to pull your whole arm up and not just your wrist to try to avoid bending the wrist excessively, as that will lead to pain uh, while you practice this. Okay, now try to keep some separation in these notes. We don't want them to turn to mud by letting them bleed together. After that, there's a quite a transition into a dropped elbow position because we have to stretch up and out with the pinky finger. So this is kind of related to these vertical motion concepts. Uh, I'll put the little eye thing in the video here if you want to check that video out. But basically we have to rotate our arm or rotate our forearm and change our hand position to change the direction in which we're stretching. The hard part about this is that it happens so quickly. We only have a buffer of one note to make that switch, and that's gonna be the open third string plucked with the right hand middle finger. So after our power chord, we pluck that note and drop the arm so we can then hammer on seven on string two, and then 11 on string four. So it's a quick switch, and that's gonna be the hard part about this part of the riff. We're gonna have to switch back though, right away. So after you hit that pinky, use that pinky as a pivot point to then rotate your arm back up a little bit so we can reach fret eight on string seven. You don't have to go super far up to reach that note, just as far as you have to, to kind of get out of this um, upward diagonal position. We're gonna then hit the octave, uh, fret 10 on string five, and then pluck that third string open one more time, and those are all G's, so it kind of sounds like all the same note. So, all together, we have seven, nine, nine, open pluck, seven, 11, eight, 10, open. Okay, so let's talk about a few tips and tricks uh, with this first section that I can give you that you'll want to pay attention to. 
Uh, the first one is going to be hammering on that second string note. You gotta be careful not to mute that string too much, otherwise that note just doesn't even come through. And if you don't mute it enough, it just doesn't sound like a note at all. So it's a very fine line uh, for how much you wanna mute string number two. The second thing you're gonna wanna keep an eye on is that pinky finger hammer on on string four. That one I find gets sloppy really quickly if you allow your pinky finger to come up too much before the hammer on. It just makes accuracy that much harder and that's kind of a, just a general hammer on tip. So when you do that rotation down, keep your hand low. Right, so my finger is already primed right above the fret here. And it's just ready to plop down. Last little tip for this part of the riff is the right hand muting won't be enough in times. If you don't have accuracy in your left hand, you're gonna end up slapping other strings and it's just gonna create um, a lot of like, that sound during the riff. And we wanna avoid that as much as we possibly can because it's already gonna be present with this selective picking technique. And then as much as possible, lay your fingers flat across the strings to mute the ones that you're not using. When I hammer on this first note, I land in a position where all six strings below it are muted by that finger. And if I can, I'll even try to just slightly touch string eight with the tip of my finger to mute that one as well. So now I have two spots that are muting the strings because uh, all these strings, if you let any of them through and ring out, it gets unwieldy very quickly. The good news is that section two is essentially the same thing as section one, just a little bit easier because that hammer on on string two is now on string three. So it starts the same. We have our power chord, arpeggiated, pluck with the right hand and then hammer on fret seven string three. So I just find that sequence a little bit easier when you get to hammer on the note you just plucked. It also cleans things up a little bit because we don't have to worry about open strings ringing while we're doing these other hammer-ons. And then it finishes the same way. We're gonna pivot up and do eight, 10, O. And that's the second section. So all the tips apply from the first section. Hopefully uh, this group of nine notes will be a little bit easier. The third section switches it up a little bit and we're gonna move up to position nine. Now again, we have a little bit of time to do that because we're gonna start with an open plucked third string. That means that we have two pluck notes in a row. Coming out of the end of part two of this riff, we end with that open string and we have to pluck it right away. My only tip there would just be don't pluck too hard because the harder you pluck, the more energy it takes, the longer it will take and it'll just slow you down. So just do two quick little light plucks with that middle finger. And you can just practice that a little bit for the transition if you're having a problem with that. All right, we're gonna hammer on from that open string to the ninth fret of the same string, string three. Fret 11 on string four comes next. So that's the first three notes. O, nine, 11. Now, after all of these big stretched um, shapes, this is gonna feel very clustered and tight. So make sure your fingers do come in. It's gonna feel tighter than it normally would, um, but that's okay. It's just getting used to that transition. From here, we're gonna play fret 10 on string seven, fret nine on string five, and then pluck open string three again. That pluck is gonna to lead to a hammer on fret seven on string three, fret 11 on string four, and then finally fret nine on string five. So that whole third section looks like this. So something I haven't mentioned yet with all of these first three sections of the tune, we repeat them twice. So we can think of one pass as those three notes three times, so nine notes, and then we repeat those nine notes. So the first section is going to be repeat, Second section, repeat. Third section, repeat. All right, this last part is crazy. It's very different than everything we've done so far. It's left hand acrobatics. So we're gonna start with fret seven, string six, fret five on string eight slide down, and then here's the hard part, we have to reach after that slide from five to four, reach all the way up to fret nine on string six, and 
pluck that note. So we have. Okay, so that's a group of four. So already we can see that the feeling of this section of the riff is going to change from the selective picking. No longer are we just in groups of three. So one, two, three, four. Now here comes the palm muted part where we're gonna pick. Seven, seven, six, seven, seven, six. So up to there we have. Next we're gonna redo that slide motion that we did before from five to four, except this time on string five. But again, it's followed by a huge stretch up to fret nine. We're gonna plant that pinky and use it kind of as an anchor so we can pull up our first finger really quickly up to fret seven. So now we've done a very sneaky position shift. Oh, that's sneaky, it's pretty obvious, it was pretty big. We're gonna do another slide immediately once we get to fret seven. And do another huge stretch up to fret 11. So we have essentially two slides with huge stretches. The final two notes of this are just a palm muted 9 9. So we're gonna do a little finger roll on a string 6 and 5. So that whole riff looks like this. So tips for this riff, make sure you practice it slowly and get it super controlled before you speed it up. The more you move your hand around and do any extraneous movements, just it's gonna turn it into sloppiness. Um, I always say this about things, you have to get them tight and clean before you begin to speed them up. But for some reason, it's even more important in this riff. If you have big enough hands, you don't even have to move when you do those slide, uh, slide into stretch kind of shapes. But for those of you who don't have really wide hands, you might have to jump around a little bit. And that's why this uh, riff is kind of very acrobatic. Not done yet, because we have to repeat the whole thing. And getting from this finger roll back into the proper right hand muting position and the right selective picking is a huge challenge in and of itself. So do not neglect to practice the connecting uh, tissue when you have to repeat from the end of the phrase back to the beginning. One final tip that I can think of here for this riff is to think of your left hand as if you were a piano player. Normally the left hand doesn't have to worry too much about rhythmic accuracy and it can just put the note down a little bit before the right hand takes care of uh, when the note happens with the pick, right? The right hand usually takes care of rhythmic placement. With selective picking, however, the rhythmic aspect of whatever we're playing is controlled with the left hand. So make sure those notes are being hammered on exactly when you want to and use a metronome to make sure you're in time. There will probably be some muscle development that has to happen and your hand will be left feeling a little sore the first few times you practice this. That's okay, that just means you're making progress. And as long as it isn't chronic soreness or a uh, very tweaky pain. You're okay. And that's the riff. So I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are trying to learn this song. This is one of the hardest parts of the song in my opinion, and it will take a while to get down. So be patient with yourself. Always give yourself some forgiveness when you're trying to learn things that are challenging, and especially if this is a new technique to you in general. If you like these videos or what I'm trying to do on this channel, then feel free to leave a donation down at the buy me a coffee link in the description. Every little bit is appreciated and it helps me in making more content for you guys. I also offer a limited number of online lessons for those of you who are interested in doing some one-on-one -on -one lesson time. Those links can also be found down in the description below. So let me know down in the comments below what riffs you'd like to see in future videos or what other content you'd like to see covered by this channel. But with that said, I hope you have a great rest of your day wherever you are. And as always, happy practicing. <laughs>